Hi, I'm Michael Emerson, and I play Harold Finch on Person of Interest. Hi, I'm Kevin Chapman. I play T Detective Lionel Fusco on Person of Interest. Uh, so what part uh, does Comic-Con play in order to keep shows like yours alive? Well, I'm not, I'm not sure. I, I, I suppose that's a good question on a day when we're at Comic-Con. I, I think, uh, of course, Comic-Con has grown into a showcase for all things genre in American entertainment. Cinema, TV, comic books. But I suppose a show, I mean, I suppose then you have to say, well, I'm giving you really a terrible answer. I, I suppose you have to say, well, what is it about Person of Interest that qualifies it as a genre show? And I think the first couple of seasons, I thought, well, this is really quite, a, you know, it's kind of like a vigilante procedural. It doesn't have all, any of the usual, you know, details of a, of a genre show. But now I think, now that our show is more about a sort of, invisible battle between two artificial intelligences. I think we may have swerved back over the line into science fiction and maybe that is of interest to the crowd at Comic-Con. That was a great answer. I'm not even going to mess with that. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, it's a, it's a question that I ask myself every year. It's like, what, now, does, what shows do not go to Comic-Con now? What, what do you have to do or be to not be included on, under the umbrella of you know, a, a Comic-Con show? Oh, that's, that is very true. And um, what is it like watching your characters evolve over the past four seasons? Well, it's, it's, not, a, it's, it's not a thing you give much thought to, or at least I don't, I, I would say. The, the way things evolve is gradually and kind of invisibly or without you being aware of it. Over the course of time, you get more comfortable in your role. Um, more of who you really are begins to seep into the playing of it. So I would say that Mr. Finch is possibly a, a funnier character than he was four years ago. And, and, then, and then you have a kind of uh, circuitry with the writers, they see you do a certain thing and they like it and then they'll write more of it for you. So gradually, without even talking about it, the, the tone or character of some scenes uh, begins to shift a, a little bit. And sometimes if it's brought to your attention, you think, surely we're doing the same thing we were. But no, things have gradually shifted. That's way too long an answer for your question, I'm sorry. I, I, for me, it's been it's been Fusco's road to redemption. Um, you know, he started out as a as a, a rather shady character, and uh, as it's progressed, he's become more and more into the light. So now it's a question of whether or not he's a good guy doing bad things or a bad guy doing good things. And, and so, um, you know, the, the the redeemable qualities of him are really starting to come to the forefront uh, of the writing and. Um, it's been exciting to play. Now, your, your show is considered one of the, the, the most successful dramas that are on right now. Do you think that is because of the time that we're living in and the events are happening? Or, or is there something more that is in within your show? I think it's really hard to put your finger on why a, a TV show succeeds in this highly competitive time in the world of television. It, it Great acting. Well, it, it, it helps to have, I mean, Jonah Nolan would say it's, it's about characters. It's about getting an audience to identify with or be interested in characters, kind of regardless of what situations they're involved in. But I think the writing, you need smart writing and good characters. You need some kind of consistency and an artistic vision. It's something, I mean, if you could say what it is, they would only make them that way. And, and then no television shows would ever fail.